Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen from Game Pro News and I'm here with Brian from Blizzard and we're talking about StarCraft 2 because you're the lead writer. I am. <laughs> so, uh, but you weren't a games writer from the beginning, were you? You started out in films and animation? Correct. Yeah, I was, I was a storyboard artist in, uh, in, in the Los Angeles film industry for, for years and years and years. Um, but storyboarding is uh, very much storytelling with drawings. It's visual storytelling. So, so really, the the leap into writing wasn't that big of a, a, a change for me. And and so, why games? Oh, I've I've been a gamer since the 1980s. Uh, I was uh, yes, I'm old. Uh, I was I was playing uh, Infocom text adventures on on the original IBM PC. <laughs> Uh, back then, so yeah, and and you know, rogue games like that, the the ASCII uh, uh, characters. So um, yeah, I've always loved games. Um, I always loved film as well, but I, I found myself sort of playing playing games more often than I was seeing films, um, and it just seemed like a, a natural progression. So and I and I don't re you know I, I love having made this jump because I, I really love this industry. I'm guessing also this particular project, if you've come from that sort of history, this particular project is probably a bit of a dream come true, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, well, I, I love all of Blizzard's uh, IPs, um, to be honest. Any, any one of them would have been a dream come true. Um, but definitely, you know, with the, the science fiction background, StarCraft is, is, uh, is a, a very special thing to work on. So when you came on board with the project, I hear that the story had pretty much been sketched out. They had a vague idea of where it was going to go. How much has that changed since you've been around? Well, in terms of the, the overarching story that's sort of going on behind the scenes that will, will slowly become clearer as we go, uh, uh, the big pieces for that were all in place um, uh, and have been for some time. Um, but a, a lot of the details uh, are sort of left open, um, and that's that's very much on purpose because you know we need to be able to evolve as we go, and um, and you know in storytelling the, the devil is in the details for sure. So so there's definitely a lot of a lot of places where I can I can have input and really you know try to try to make a difference. Um, but yeah, there's also and this is actually a comfort as well. There's there is sort of an, an overarching sense of what's supposed to happen. None of the characters have run away on tangents. I'm so, I'm sorry. What? N none, of, none of the characters have just decided to run away on tangents oh, completely differently to where yeah. you'd expected. No, no, we haven't had that. That that is a that's a real danger when you're writing. Um, certainly, when I write my own stuff, that happens all the time. I I, I think the character's going to walk through the door and turn right, but then they decide to turn left, and and that can be difficult. Um, but no, I think uh, what's what's nice is these characters uh, are have been sort of a part of this this broad you know canvas for so long that that really it's kind of in their DNA who they are and what what they need to do and so it's really this organic thing where they they very naturally fit into the role that they're fulfilling. Yep. There were some difficult decisions that must have been made from a from a writing perspective in StarCraft too. Some difficult events to, to have to come to terms with. What was that like, having to actually put that on paper? Well, um, it's, uh, it's always scary. But it's, I mean, all of it's scary. I have to say, you know, uh, um, talking about how, you know, what a big IP this is, the, the first day that I, I wrote a, a line of dialogue for Sarah Kerrigan, I was, I was literally just at the keyboard like, oh, I'm going to, you know, oh my God, Kerrigan's going to say this. And I think the line was cut about 12 hours later, but, you know, still, it was, <laughs> it was kind of a big, a big moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, there's, there's always uh, tough stuff, especially, you know, uh, when you really love the characters that you're working with, you know, and, and StarCraft is kind of a violent place and it doesn't always end happily for everyone. So, uh, so that, that's definitely hard. Uh, Chris Metzen has made no secret of the fact that he basically uh, borrows ideas fairly liberally from just about everything that he ever lays eyes on. Is that an attitude that's shared by the rest of the team? Well, um, it, you know, honestly, I, th I think that, that Chris might be being a little hard on himself there because we're all artists and creative people are inspired by a lot of things. Um, and when you reach the, the point where you're saying that you borrow, that, that's, that's a whole nother level. Um, I know Chris, you know, like, like myself and like everyone else on the StarCraft team is a huge geek. And so he, 
you know, he reads everything and watches every movie and tries to play every game. And, you know, just, just we're, we're all sort of constantly taking in stuff and whatever we like sticks, you know. So um, we're all, we all have lots of different sources of inspiration. And I think if, you know, if you have many different types of inspiration and they all sort of combine in you into a unique uh, perspective and, and a unique set of ideas, and then you work with other people that are doing the same thing, you do, you do end up with something that has its own flavor, you know? Um, but, but I can certainly say that, yes, everyone on the team is, is a huge fan of everything good in, in the geek, you know, game, comic book, movie, novel world. Um, and we're constantly looking at everything and, and kind of talking about how excited we are uh, about this, that, and the other. Uh, with the, the game that obviously it just blew out of control when you started writing it because it was originally going to be one game and now it's three, do you think that because of the character development that's going to obviously have to go on, are there going to be people who are going to be forced to identify with, with characters and races and classes that they might not normally have wanted to touch? Um, not if I do my job right. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think anyone um, will be forced to. Um, but uh, if if the if the writing is is good and the, and the storytelling and the, the the visual storytelling and everything is good, uh, people might find themselves identifying with a character that they would not have expected to identify with. Um, you know, they might they might sort of start a, a little kind of like you know, oh well, I I don't like that race or I don't like this character or whatever. Um, and then, and then start to to realize what's human in that character and what it is that 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 they understand, and and they can sort of compare to themselves in some way. And you know, before they know it, hopefully, we've got them. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.